This is Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. It serves as the center of Indonesia's economy, culture, and politics. And it homes to over 10 million residents. However, Jakarta is now facing serious environmental and social issues. The city is known for its notorious congestion and flooding. In addition, parts of Jakarta are sinking at an estimated 25 centimeters per year, and around 25% of the capital could be submerged by 2050. This could be more widespread with the impact of climate change. With these in mind, as part of Joko Widodo's legacy, Indonesia had planned to relocate its administrative capital to East Kalimantan province on the island of Borneo. Early this year, Indonesia's parliament passed the capital city bill into law, meaning the construction of the country's new capital can begin, ahead of the planned relocation starting in early 2024. However, the problem came shortly, after Japan's SoftBank Group Corporation opted not to invest in the project. Indonesia has suggested a crowdfunding scheme, for the relocation of the country's capital after a major investor declined to back the US$32 billion United States dollars project, prompting ridicule from critics and questions about ownership of the planned city. The sheer scale of such development is hard to imagine. The Indonesian government plans to transform 256,000 hectares of inland forest, almost three times the size of New York City, into the country's new administrative headquarters. As communicated by President Joko Widodo, Indonesia will continue its plan to build a new capital city despite the economic pressure due to the current COVID-19 pandemic, and the war between Russia and Ukraine. After SoftBank confirmed it would not be involved in the project, the proposed location of the new capital expressed concern that any crowdfunding effort would be dominated by businesses hoping to make a profit. Only about 20% of the relocation plan's estimated $32 billion costs will come from state coffers, leaving the private sector or other governments to make up the shortfall. Since the plan was announced, the government has sought investment from the Middle East, with five countries said to be in talks to provide funding. The Asian Development Bank said earlier this year it would assist in raising money for the new capital, but stopped short-term pledges on direct funds or loans. With a price tag of over $32.7 billion and a total of 1.5 million civil servants are estimated to make the move from the current capital Jakarta to the tentatively named Evo Kota Negara. Translated as New Capital City The project is an ultimate exercise in transformative planning and design. The mammoth task is matched by monumental ambitions. Constructing the new capital is the government's political and technocratic response to social and environmental issues in both the current capital and the countryside. The stunning renderings of the new city were inspired by the Indonesian archipelago, which features the Indonesian presidential palace, and the unity in diversity plaza. The design places the presidential palace, the new parliament, and judiciary complexes in the north. a business district in the center, and housing in the south. It will also have an artificial lake, surrounded by monuments, a religious center, and a plaza. The inspiration for the new city was filled with electric vehicles, modern monorails, and drone taxis. These make it a new smart city, with the newest technology, and a clean city featuring a lot of artificial intelligence. It was intentionally made it a compact city design, so places will be close to one another, it aims for 50 minutes walk, from one end to the other end. Plans for the new capital, promise to alleviate environmental and population pressures in Greater Jakarta and more evenly distribute development across the country. As Indonesian President Joko Widodo explains, the decision to move the capital is not merely to relocate the presidential palace or ministries. They want to shift the work culture, to build a system where they can swiftly address and respond to threats. 
In addition, Indonesia seeks to solidify a self-determined national unity in the diverse archipelago by strategically shifting the center of power from its economically developed colonial port city to the rural geographical heart of the country. Outlining the importance of this move, Widodo paints a picture of the new capital as one of the world's most sustainable forest cities, free from Jakarta's congestion and climate-vulnerable coastline. Creating this city is more than a civil infrastructure megaproject, it is a rewrite of the national narrative in built form. The site is four times the size of Jakarta, and will start construction in the coming months. Relocating a national capital is not unprecedented. With the move, Indonesia will join over a dozen countries worldwide that have relocated their administrative centers since the mid-20th century, including its Southeast Asian neighbors Malaysia and Myanmar. The Philippines is also currently constructing its brand new smart city where all government agencies will operate its satellite offices. But these experiences offer poignant premonitions. Putrajaya's green infrastructure is undermined by energy-intensive architecture. Napida is empty city and its total opposite of the country's condition. Brasilia's beauty is overshadowed by inequality. Washington, D.C.'s overwhelmed lavish maintenance cost, that affects every American's. Though Indonesia, copied Australia's capital Canberra notion, for making its new administrative center. Will the new Indonesian capital be able to avoid a similar fate? With COVID-19, such a question is timely. The disease effectively paused the new capital's once fast-track construction plans and shone a bright light on long-standing disparities in Indonesia. Within cities, COVID-19 cases rose precipitously in dense, poor, and informal settlements with little water or sanitation infrastructure. Between cities and towns, unequal access to health services revealed the need for extending basic health care throughout the country. Citizens are left to wonder how relocating the capital will alleviate environmental and social issues in Jakarta and avoid their recurrence in Kalimantan. Understanding the dynamic conditions of these disparities across layers of the human environment. From land to water infrastructure to housing, it will be the foundational to achieving climate resilient and equitable development, in East Kalimantan, Jakarta, and Indonesia as a whole. Peeling back these physical layers, prompt a number of questions that hinge this megaproject's success. After pandemic-related delays, the project of the new capital resumes is now in its planning stage, with international consulting firm McKinsey undertaking a feasibility study. By revealing the unequal landscape created by traditional development, the pandemic has the potential to shift the physical bias in urban projects toward practices that reflect environmental and social systems. The new capital is an opportunity to address issues that plagued both Jakarta and East Kalimantan for decades. Building the new capital is an exercise in structural imagination, political will, and effective implementation. Amidst the legacies of inequitable development, and transformative potential of the project, lies the central question of who the new capital city is for. And who, gets left behind. The decision relies mainly on government priorities, between relocating its administrative capital to save Jakarta from ecological and environmental issue. And addressing basic necessity of residents under poverty line.